what caused the sudden surge of the Western world's most powerful leaders to go to Afghanistan, this report continues, was to directly see the discovery by the United States military scientists of what is described as a Vimana trapped in a well time which has already caused the disappearance of at least eight the United States soldiers trying to get him out of the cave in which he has been hidden in the last estimated 5,000 years. Important to note about the technology of Vimana is that this mysterious ship is the well-known mythological flying machine described in the ancient Sanskrit epics that existed before the last time our Earth turned upside down and was carrying disquietingly similar weapons to the atomic bombs of today. The reference to ancient Indian flying vehicles comes from ancient Indian sources, many are the well-known ancient Indian epics, and there are literally hundreds of them. Most of them have not even been translated into English yet from Old Sanskrit. It is said that a few years ago, the Chinese discovered some Sanskrit documents in Lhasa, Tibet, and sent them to the University of Chandragarh to translate. Dr. Ruth Reina of the university recently said that the documents contain instructions for the construction of interstellar spacecraft. His method of propulsion, he said, was anti-gravitational and was based on a system analogous to that of Lagima, the unknown power of the ego existing in the physiological structure of man, a centrifugal force strong enough to counteract all gravitational attraction. According to the Hindu yogis, it is this Lagima that allows a person to levitate. Dr. Reina said that aboard these machines, which were called astras by the text, the ancient Indians could have sent a detachment of men to any planet, according to the document, which is believed to be thousands of years old. Manuscripts are also said to reveal the secret of Antima, the cloak of invisibility and Gerima, how to become as heavy as a mountain of lead. Stephen Quayle is the author of five books. For more than 30 years, he has been researching ancient civilizations, giants, UFOs, and biological warfare and their relationship to the future of mankind. Stephen discusses the next worst scenarios as the world approaches and how they interrelate with each other. Earthquakes, volcanoes, nuclear and biological terrorism, coupled with the expected financial crisis of the, the United States dollar, will push us into unimaginable tribulations. Stephen Quayle indicates that we have moved from the sphere of natural threats to the area of supernatural events guided by the invisible hand of evil orchestrating world events of unimaginable proportions. Many believe that ancient civilizations have left traces of advanced technology over the centuries, long before man became aware. Vimana, it is the name of an old machine used by the gods of India. The earliest accounts of this amazing civilization, written in Sanskrit thousands of years ago, describe the different forms and materials of the Vimana. These strange flying machines were used in incredible fighting, worthy of Star Wars, hundreds of years before Christ. In the Mahabharata, a narrative describing the war between the two most important clans of India around 3000 BC, flying Vimanas are mentioned 41 times along with sophisticated combat weapons that shoot lightning bolts. For example, reference is made to the attacks of King Salva against the city where the god Krishna resided in Dwaraka. In this epic dispute, Salva drives a flying Vimana named Sagha who has the power to become invisible. Krishna returns the attack with a lightning bolt that locates and destroys his enemies through sound. Let's look at another illustrative passage from the Mahabharata that tells of Gurkha's attack on the Vrishis tribe. Gurkha traveling in his powerful and fast Vimana launched a single projectile, loaded with all the power of the universe, against the three cities of Vrishis and Andhakas. An incandescent pillar of smoke and fire, as bright as 10,000 suns, rose in all its splendor. It was the unknown weapon, the steel thunderbolt, a gigantic messenger of death that reduced the race of Vrishnas and Andhakas to ashes. In the Ramayana, which tells the adventures of Princess Siddha kidnapped by the evil Ravana, another flying machine called Paspeka is mentioned. The Paspeka car that resembles the sun was brought by my brother Ravana. This excellent aerial car can go anywhere at will. It looks like a luminous cloud in the sky. And King Rama had it and rose with it towards the highest atmosphere. While the text does not qualify this flying car as a Vimana, 
good could be another flying machine that used the same principles of the famous Vimana. Illustration of what could have been the Vespaka of Ravana, according to Dr. V. Raghavan, former professor of Sanskrit of the University of Madras, there are many documents in Sanskrit, dated hundreds of years ago, proving that extraterrestrial visitors were in ancient India. There is an enormous amount of fascinating information about flying machines and even science fiction weapons, which can be found in the translations of the Vedas and other ancient texts in Sanskrit. Fifty years of research have convinced me that there are living beings on other planets and that they visited Earth 4000 years BC. There are not only stories about the aerodynamic qualities of these Vimana but also how they can be constructed. In the Ramayana it is indicated that it takes 16 types of metals to construct them but here on earth we only know three of them. Dr. Ruth Raina of the University of Chandragarh translated Sanskrit texts describing the anti-gravitational forces that which the yogis developed to levitate. According to their investigations, that same anti-gravitational force is the one that allowed the Vimana to move through the space. Although it seems paradoxical compared to the majority of reports of sightings of extraterrestrial ships, the information contained in the Sanskrito texts on the form, the process of construction, materials, and weapons of the Vimana leaves little to the imagination. The numerous mentions of Vimanas in texts dealing not only with Hindu mythology but also with its history indicate that these Vimana were a possible reality hundreds of years before Christ. Dr. Raghavan claims that this technology was brought by beings from other planets 4000 years BC, at the same time that Sumerian culture flourished in Mesopotamia and the Anunnaki extraterrestrials lived among them. According to Dr. Raghavan, the laws of the Babylonians, Hakata, successors of the Sumerians in the Mesopotamian region, indicate without ambiguity. The privilege of commanding one of these flying machines is very great. The knowledge of piloting is among our oldest legacies. It was a gift from those who came from above. We received them from them as a means to save many lives. Those who came from above is, in Sumerian language, synonymous with Anunnaki. We can infer that it was the Anunnaki who showed the Sumerians and then the Babylonians how to build and manage these sophisticated machines. The Anunnaki knowledge and presence could have been extended to India. The iconography of some Hindu gods and some mythological accounts may be evidence of a possible Anunnaki presence. It is interesting to analyze the case of Hanuman, one of the faithful servants of Rama, whose story is in the Ramayana. Hanuman was an intelligent monkey man who could communicate, had powers, and who led an army of monkeys against the lair of Ravana in present-day Sri Lanka. Could Hanuman be the fruit of another Anunnaki experiment? It should not be forgotten that in the story of Gilgamesh Sumerian hero, this travels accompanied by Enkidu, a being with Neanderthal characteristics that could be a kind of Hanuman. Can we say that the Hindu texts narrate events that actually happened? A few years ago, an investigation by Michael Cremo confirmed that the alleged bridge between India and Sri Lanka, which according to the Ramayana was built by Hanuman and his army of monkeys, is submerged off the coasts of South India. Most likely it is a natural formation and not an artificial construction made by Hanuman, but that does not disqualify the veracity of the descriptions found in the story. In fact, many of the characters mentioned in these stories have been historical figures as the supposed god Krishna himself assumed human form and participated in the great battle of Mahabharata. You can now visit the house where Krishna grew up in Gokul. It is the abode of Nanda Maharaj, with its 84 columns, described in detail in the sacred Hindu texts. At the entrance to the house is the tree in which Krishna used to play and lie down to play the flute 5000 years ago. This place has so much relevance that it has been classified as a world heritage site by the Hindu government. On the other hand, the great confrontation on the Kurukshetra plain between the Pandavas and Kauravas, narrated in the Mahabharata, is part of the history of India. Moreover, Recent research has argued that Dwaraka, the city of a thousand temples mentioned in this same account, is submerged off the western shores of India. It should be noted that in the Mahabharata is mentioned more than 40 times the fantastic flying sorcerers Vimana worshippers, and lethal weapons that seem to come out of a science fiction film. In short, 
we can state that the events narrated in the Hindu texts happened, that the characters existed and that the places have been located by modern archaeology. There are, therefore, ample reasons to suspect that the Vimana existed not in the imagination of those who told the story, but in reality itself. The precision with which the Vimana are described is surprising. Strong and durable should be the body of the Vimana, like a large flying bird made of light material. Inside one must place the mercury engine with its steel heater underneath. Through the latent power in the mercury, which puts the whirlwind in motion, a man sitting inside can travel a great distance in the sky. The movements of the Vimana are such that you can ascend vertically, descend vertically, and lean forward and backward. The stories about the Vimanas have been compiled and treated in books such as the Anti-Gravity Handbook by David Hatcher Childress. In this work the techniques to construct the Vimana using materials such as graphite bars, copper coils or glass indicators are mentioned. For many ufologists, the Vimana are what we know today as flying saucers and their crews are beings of other planets. Proof of this are the hundreds of texts, translated from Sanskrit, where these flying machines are mentioned. The specialists claim that there are still many other texts on the Vimana that have not yet been translated. Michael Cremo, as Schliemann the discoverer of Troy, assumes the veracity of the mythological accounts. Following descriptions of ancient Hindu texts, Cremo has found several of the places mentioned in these accounts. Works such as that of Michael Cremo, Forbidden Archaeology, reveal an unconventional history of the evolution of the human species. In it, the mythological and sacred elements have a historical value, something that does not admit the traditional history. Steve Quayle, the writer and researcher who affirmed that the Vimanas ships exist in 2011, Steve Quayle affirmed in the radio program Coast to Coast AM, that a Vimana ship was trapped in a cave in Afghanistan, causing the mysterious disappearance of at least eight American soldiers. There is a war going on, China, Russia and the, the United States, everyone is competing to have the old Vimana technology in their possession, Quayle said in a statement. Radio Show